this is the mechanism of action so there were three mechan two mechanism of action what we were discussing sorry for the interruption so they block the formation of the initiation step and they induce the misreading of mrna right so in the next slide i have showed the diagram where the amino glycosides bind to the 30s microsomal subunit and they cause the blockage of protein synthesis or they block the further translation and analysis the premature termination so other than these two uh, mechanism of action they also uh, cause the incorporation of incorrect amino acid so moving on to the next slide so there are two ways where you can represent the mechanism of action one is either by the diagram or one is through the flow chart so this drug is actively transported across the cell membrane into the cytoplasm by oxygen dependent process where the transmembrane electrochemical gradient supplies the energy for this process so this is coupled to a proton pump and thereby amino glycoside binds to a specific 30s microsomal subunit so when this binds to 30s sub, uh, microsomal subunit there is interference with the initiation complex and peptide formation is not formed there is a misreading of mrna and they break up of polysomes into the further non functional monosomes inhibiting the translocation step the next is uh, the resistance we know that these antibiotics okay they have either the cross uh, resistance or they cause resistance so here there are certain mechanisms through which the resistance can be seen so in the case of amino glycosides the resistance can develop either by drug inactivation or impaired entry or altered binding protein okay so when there is a drug inactivation the bacteria elaborates transferase enzyme or adenylating either by adenylating or acylating or phosphorylating enzyme thereby causing plasmid mediated so impaired entry is either by mutation or deletion of porins or oxygen dependent transport process which is disrupted the and altered binding protein is 30s ribosomal mutate altered or deleted mutase next slide again the diagram through which i'm trying to represent the mechanism of resistance so this is either by producing the enzymes changes the porins alters the microsomal subunit and active reflex system so moving on to the pharmacokinetics as i already told you um, in the first slides in the general properties that all these um, amino glycosides have similar properties so they are absorbed very poor orally okay so because of which the other alternative route is route is intramuscular injection okay and they are well absorbed and the toxicity in patient is both time and concentration dependent gradient either if the concentration is more it can lead to toxicity or if the uh, excretion time is more on the drug remains uh, for a longer time in the body there can be a toxicity the uses of amino glycosides the oral neomycin are given before elective bubble surgery for severe pelvic inflammatory diseases for urinary tract infections is the main amino glycosides are used the pneumonia mrsa wide variety of g negative and some g positive bacterial infections and for upper respiratory tract infections it is also given for endocarditis for bacteremia and sepsis and it is given orally for skin infections so what is the precautions it should be taken when the adverse effects is already known and even in the smaller doses or the concentration there is a possibility of developing an adverse effects so uh, it shouldn't be used in pregnancy because of risk of 
fetal ototoxicity. It cannot be combined with high ceiling diuretics and minocycline, again ototoxic drugs. So two, they are also ototoxic and aminoglycosides are ototoxic. That is why you're not supposed to combine. And it should be cautionally given elderly patients and in patients with renal insufficiency. And do not mix with any drug in the same syringe or the infusion bottle. Okay, so this is one important thing where the reaction can take place if the two drugs are mixed in the same syringe or the infusion bottle. So moving on to the each drugs, let us see the first drug, streptomycin. So it is isolated from the strain streptomyces gcs. And this is the first drug used effectively for the treatment of tuberculosis and still used as a first line drug. At present, it is used alone to treat only two infections, that is tularemia and In this slide, the streptomycin, we are talking about the contraindications, that is pregnancy causes fetal ototoxicity. And this drug can be given in a dose of 1 gram or 0.75 gram intramuscularly one day, once per day or thrice weekly for 30 to 60 days for tuberculosis. So this is important. So for tuberculosis, the streptomycin is given 1 gram or 0.75 gram intramuscularly once daily or thrice weekly for 30 to 60 days. And for other acute infections, it is given 1 gram intramuscularly once daily or twice daily for 7 to 10 days. So the uses is important use is for tuberculosis. And then it is used in safe with penicillin or ampicillin or vancomycin for four to six weeks. And for plague, it is used uh, for rapid cure within seven to 12 days. And tularemia, streptomycin cures in seven to 10 days. The next drug is gentamicin. So gentamicin commonly used acts on gram negative and gram positive organism because it is cheaper in price and excellent effect. Gentamicin is used as a first choice of drugs for serious infections like sepsis, bactericemia, pneumonia and also uh, um, infections caused by gram negative bacteria. So let us see the uses of gentamicin. <clears throat> so use restricted to serious gram negative bacillary infections because uh, because uh, because of the resistance, you use it only for the serious infections. So septicemia, sepsis, fever in immunocompromised patients used with penicillins and cephalosporins. For pelvic infections, it is used along with metronidazole. For safe, it is used along with penicillin G or ampicillin or vancomycin, where gentamicin is given in a dose of 1 mg per kg body weight for 8 hours intramuscularly. And for coliform infections with ampicillin and Cetriaxone and pseudomonal infections with ticarcillin, meningitis with gram negative bacilli, it is given along with third generation cephalosporins or with gentamicin. So you can see here that gentamicin is used always along with combinations of other antibiotics. So that is why whenever you are giving these drugs, aminoglycosides, it should never be combined together in the same syringe or the same infusion bottle. The next drug is tobramycin. So this tobramycin is slightly effective more against pseudomonas, proteas and enterobacter and tobramycin and gentamicin are interchangeable clinically. So ototoxicity and necessity probably lower when compared to other drugs. So dose is 3 to 5 milligram per kg body weight intramuscularly in 1 to three doses. The next one we have is amikacin, which is a broadest antibacterial uh, spectrum. So this drug compared to any other aminoglycosides has a broadest antibacterial spectrum. The most prominent characteristic 
of this is to bacterial ammonia glycoside it inactivates the enzyme the resistance to bacterial ammonia glycoside inactivating enzymes so this is one prominent character of amino glycosides which you have to remember and that is how it differentiates from other drugs and it is considered as a broadest antibacterial spectrum drug so this drug is mainly used for uh, infections caused by bacteria that are resistant to other amino glycosides so this is used as a preservative drug in case the other drugs do not respond because of the resistance you can go with amikacin you can choose amikacin for the treatment of infections next is kenamycin so kenamycin is obtained from kenamycetes which is similar to streptomycin and even active against myco mycobacterium tuberculosis but lack the activity on pseudomonas so more toxic to cochlea and kidney hearing loss irreversible hearing loss is irreversible sorry that is ease and because of toxicity and narrow spectrum it is replaced by other drugs though kenamycin is active against tuberculosis uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis this is not used because of its adverse uh, adverse effects that is only streptomycin is streptomycin is used so dose is 0.5 g intramuscularly twice daily the next is we have two other drugs sisomycin and nevlimycin so sisomycin is very identical to gentamicin in both its characteristics its toxicity and also susceptible to amino glycoside inactivating enzymes and nevlimycin is resistant to many enzymes that inactivate gentamicin and tobramycin so it has a lowest toxicity semi synthetic drug of sisomycin and is active against klebsiella enterobacter and staphylococcal and uh, less active against pseudomonas and aeruginosa so doses and pharmacokinetics are similar to gentamicin uses it is used in septicemia lower respiratory tract infection urinary tract infection peritonitis and endometritis next drug we have is neomycin so neomycin is also one among the important drug next to streptomycin okay. so this is active against gram negative bacilli and gram positive cocci pseudomonas and streptopyrogen uh, pyrogens are not sensitive to neomycin it is very toxic for parental use that is why it is used as a topical drug so neomycin is used only as a topical drug dose 0.25 to 1 g 4 times a day orally but because of its toxicity they don't use this drug 0.3 to 0.5% as topical uses it is used in skin eye and inter external ear infections combined with bacitracin or polymyxin b to widen antibacterial spectrum and to prevent emergence of resistant strains <clears throat> orally preparation of bowel before surgery it is given 1 g thrice daily and in hepatic coma it is given to suppress the ammonia forming coliforms which prevents en uh, encephalopathy okay and then for bladder irrigation along with polymyxin b it can be used um so it's the same slide it is uh, i have given the uses topically and orally separately so topically for skin eye and external ear infections and orally to prepare the bowel hepatic coma and bladder irrigation so next is adverse drug reaction of neomycin so low sensitizing potential rashes and oral neomycin damage the intestinal villi prolonged treatment causes malabsorption syndrome diarrhea decreasing the absorption of digoxin bile acid suppresses the gut flora causing super infection by candida and is excreted unchanged in kidney causing kidney damage and ototoxicity in serous cavity it causes apnea due to muscle paralyzing action this year um this is a next slide i'm giving you the guidelines for adjustment of dose in renal insufficiency we know that this drug causes 
uh, renal insufficiency okay so we can see that depending upon the creatinine clearance you can adjust the maximum daily dosing and the frequency of the dosing the last slide um so these are questions which you need to answer and send it to the mail id okay so what is the mechanism of action of tetracyclines chloramphenicol and ammonic glycoside so how do they differ that is what i'm asking are they different or are they similar so you need to write the mechanism of action of all these three group of drugs then what is gray baby syndrome which is the first drug used in the treatment of microbacterium and explain in detail you don't need to write about this drug in detail thank you very much if you have any doubts you can please message me anytime